Okay guys, this is going to be our Mission Impossible 318 manifold testing head. Rob was nice enough to dig these off of an old 318 he had. I have to admit it's probably the dirtiest and most worn out head I've seen in a very long time. How worn out is it? Well, can you see that edge right there on that seat? That is from actually wearing into that ridge on the exhaust valve. Why, are they, why is it so worn out? If they're not cracked, it's a miracle. Okay, so what we're going to do on these is we're going to give them... I spent a huge amount of time cleaning them and they're still filthy. That's how filthy they are, okay? It doesn't care. I don't, I'm not saying anything bad about Rob. He was nice enough to rip them off and bring them here. He says, you need them for testing? No problem. And I do need them for testing. Why does Charlie need heads for testing? I don't have any 318 heads we could use that are similar to the ones that I brought up to DVs to test for the four barrel manifolds. And possibly a tunnel ram. Now, I know of one four barrel manifold that's been donated already. Can't thank you enough. And I know of another goodie that Andy is going to wind up purchasing. I'll let him talk about that when he gets it. And uh, in other words, I need to figure out, I need to get this pretty close to where that head was so I can do the manifolds. Because I asked Andy if I could you know, do anything else with the project. And he was like, yeah, <laughs> we'll do the uh, four bar manifolds. I'm like, send them down. No problem. So what do we got? Well, for a bone stock port with worn out valves and guides, it handled the liquid quite well. Okay, if you take a look right across the plug, we got liquid. We got liquid in this direction. It's actually a lot better than the open chamber. If I remember the open chamber, the open chamber didn't, didn't, wasn't nearly as wide here, and it didn't, it didn't do much of an angle on the, the chamber. It was more over this side, I believe. Now, you have to remember, this is a little more blocked off now on this side, so it's going to change how much flow comes out on this side, right? But it is nice, it does have a quench pad. Now, this is a 1967 cylinder head um, I think it's a 920 820 I don't know let me see if I can wire brush that okay they look like 920s all right how do we do on our valve well it's tough to see because it's a black valve I just wire brushed but you can see how much dykem we got we got a nice spread on the valve now this is completely stocked with a evaporation ridge. Remember, the evaporation ridge actually helps with our fuel distribution, right? So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, we're going for high performance. We want to get extra airflow, okay? Knocking that down, putting a back cut on it gives us extra airflow. Let's take a look at the bore. Okay, I have to use external light because all my other lights are shot. Okay. In reality, this is way better than I remember the open chamber did first time out. Remember, it's completely stock and it still has dirt in the ports. So, with worn out, worn out guides, worn out seats. So, this handles the liquid better than the open chamber did. I have no doubt if you just took open chamber heads and put a set of these on, you would pick up power. Okay, you're going to gain compression. You're going to gain a little quench. It handles the fuel better. I have no doubt it would run better. Okay, we're light challenged today, so we're going to do what we can do, and I, that's the best I'm going to get today. I have to charge my lights. Okay, absolutely tiny port. Tiny. Okay, you can see... You can see how much bigger even a 318 gasket is here, right? So they're tiny ports, tiny as far as our pinch. 
but in reality, they work fairly well. I would say these uh, these do as well as Chevy 305 heads, as good as a stock 083 head. Pretty close to the 083 head. Remember, 083 head's got a 194.15 valve. That's actually got almost a fuel port on it, but it has a hole in the roof. Still, those work up real nice. That's what I got on the old work truck. Okay, we're not going to take all night on this because it's completely stock garbage, right? So what we are going to do is just take a look at what we got completely stock, right? 178, 1 1.5. Take a look at our, our, our numbers. 161.2 is not terrible. I think the best I got was like 175 maybe. Let me see if I can dig out a late, later model uh, flow sheet. Okay, notice on the right-hand side there, it says DVIOP North Carolina. So this is what we put into the computer in North Carolina. I don't know if DV is going to do an IOP video on it. If he doesn't, I could certainly ask him and I can do one. Um, as far as what I saw on the IOP, it wasn't nearly as good as I had hoped. I'll tell you that much. Will it still do what I, it needs to do? I'm pretty sure it'll do pretty well, especially when we really start to feed it. Okay, how did we do as far as our basically done? Now, this wasn't the highest flowing head I had, uh, port I had. It was pretty close, though, 231. It was pretty good. How did we do, let's say, uh, 300? 161, 178. Okay, decent step up. 400, 174.8 to 12 change. 500, 172, 224, 600, 173.1, 230. We've got a nice, yeah, almost 60 CFM there. Big difference at the higher lifts, right? Now you have to remember, that's got my... 178 textured valve. The textured valve actually loses some flow over, over a standard uh, swirl polished valve, but it it gave us better air speeds and it took care of the liquid better. Now, as far as our swirl, our mostly done head was relatively dead until 400, and then she took off. This has got high, and then it goes down, and then it goes high, and it keeps going. Okay, it, this one actually maxes out a little more, but this has more in the mid range, and you can see that on the uh, on the chamber with the with the uh, the dicom. Okay, number five uh, port finished verse number one three eighteen closed chamber. Overall, if you take a look at these numbers. For a completely stock head, this is really good. Look how even these are, right? 251, 251, 240. All right? They're, in reality, better as far as uh, being even than my done one. Now, take a look at our roof. Well, we got a huge discrepancy there, right? Most of the air wants to go straight. So we got 270 and 227. Mine is much closer on the roof. Take a look at the short side. The short side's quite good. It's a little fast, but it's quite good. 362, 356. These will work just the way it is. So I have no doubt if you put a back cut on the intake valve and a really nice three-angle valve job, you pick up a decent amount. Now, I don't think I'm going to do that. I mean, if you really, really, really want me to, I guess I could take one of these completely shot ports. It's not going to be easy to even put a valve job on it because the guides are so bad. So I got that going for me. Let's take a look at our exhaust port. Let's see what it looks like in the head. You know, I really didn't show you the intake port, but it really is not horrible. In fact, I think it's got a smoother, smoother curves in that bowl than the open chamber did. And to be honest, I mean, I don't know if they're the same ports or not. That exhaust port looks damn good. 
completely stock, it's damn good. Okay, it's got a decent deep bowl. It's got smooth transitions. Yeah, it's got that stupid bump in the, the roof that shouldn't be there, but it's not that terrible. Okay, so this is what we got completely stock verse, what we got for finished. Now, take a look. As far as the low lifts are, <laughs> the complete stocker holds on. In fact, even beats us at 0.25. Okay? But then we start to take off. Okay? And uh, coming down to 600, we got 172.3, 132. Okay? 40 CFM up. I didn't even put a pipe on this. I forgot. Sorry, guys. In any case... Really not bad for a completely stock head. Let's take a look at the air speeds on that exhaust. Okay, number five final exhaust air speeds are here, and this is our completely stock air speeds. Notice how much higher these are, okay? 212, 133, not great, 97, almost dead in that corner. Not bad in the middle of the port. The middle of the port is good. In fact, this is actually higher than mine, okay? It's actually higher than mine here. It's actually higher than mine here. Notice how even mine is. It's not perfectly even. Now, number five was a trapezoid port. Uh, yeah, would have been a trapezoid port. So it's going to be a little different. This is a rectangular port. It's number one. So it's not apples to apples, but still you can still get a good idea what's going on by the air speeds right now as far as the floor the floor works pretty well 240 is not bad 143 we are looking at the right one right close chamber yep okay 222 the floor is fairly good so like I said not bad for completely stock what I think I'm gonna do with this is uh, kind of a low buck thing. Okay, what could I get out of this without hours and hours and hours of porting? Just with some uh, a deep bowl blend, maybe open the pinch a bit. I'll probably completely do the port, but a lot of it will just be cleaning up. Okay, and uh, I don't think I'm even going to touch the seats, but I may do an, uh, an upper and lower cut, something like that. And uh, that'll give the average guy who just has something he wants to clean up and get on the road an idea. Now, something that's as worn out as this, don't even attempt it. This thing probably burned oil like nobody's business. How did the valves look? Well, you see all that coked up garbage on there? That's oil leaking past the worn out guides. Not really good for performance. I mean, this one, I don't know whether it was had a water leak from a cracked head or it got wet at some point, but that looks like uh, that so it looks like a chocolate milkshake. That's what that's what it looks like when you get uh, water in the oil. So there's a really good chance these are cracked. So I'm not going to sweat it too much. I'd be more than happy to cut these up after we do some work to them. And uh, let me know what you want me to do on these 318s. You want me to do a max effort and uh, cut it up? I'm pretty sure you could probably convince me of doing that. I'm kind of a bit stalled on the jag heads. I'm putting off finishing the swirl ports because they're a nightmare. But... Uh, I do want to get this all set up so when those manifolds come in from Andy, I can go right on my development for, uh, for the manifolds. So, leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.